Good morning and welcome back to Margin. This morning we're going to talk about whether the housing market is going to crash. This is part one of a two-part series, so let's jump right into it. So I hear the question and I'm asked the question often relating to the housing market. Now, people often ask, okay, where's the market going? When's it going to crash? Is it going to crash? When and if it does crash, how do I actually react? And, and it's such a broad question and it's so difficult to answer, especially with how complex the market actually is. So think about it, unemployment, wage stagnation, economic cycles, interest rates, legislation, you name it. There are so many variables that factor into the housing market and honestly feed into when it, uh, it will correct or when it will uh, calm down or at least level out. But the housing market is made up of many sub markets. So when you actually hear someone talk about the economy, uh, what they're actually referring to, whether they know it or not, is a bunch of sub markets or sub economies that feed up into the country's overall economic health. Now, the housing market is a massive part of the U.S. economy, of the GDP of the you know, United States. It's uh, just shy of one fifth of the United States GDP. So it's a massive sector. So with this said, let's take a look at three key aspects of the housing market and how it relates to the specific sub market that you live in and whether that market will be impacted. Now, aspect number one, when we're looking at fundamentals, it's important to understand that there's fundamentals to the housing market. Now, this probably comes as no surprise and probably doesn't even need to be stated, but housing is not going anywhere. Technology will continue to advance at exponential rates, changing the way that we operate in the space, but having a space large or small will still continue to be a necessity. So being that this is all true, at a fundamental level, there will always be a demand for housing at some level. Now, we all know of trends that have come and gone throughout the years. Maybe the split level floor plan in your home, maybe the intercom system, maybe that atrium, and of course the notorious home office. I'm, I'm kidding. But keep in mind that housing will always be a need and trends will come and go but the, the aspect of having four walls around you will continue to be a necessity. So that said, it is important to understand your region, your state, your city, and even more so your specific neighborhood and not blindly just paying whatever it takes to get into a home, but ensuring that you're actually doing your homework, that you're actually going through the process of, 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 of doing your research. Now, whether it is that you currently own or you want to own in the future, you should be educating yourself uh, and, and understanding the market that you are in or the market that you want to be in. Now, within this lies the fundamentals of housing price to income. Now, this is a constant aspect of communication, aspect of, of, of conversation. And in an episode last week, I referenced the data uh, related to the Case-Shiller Home Price Index reported by the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. And that showed that the index for single family homes surged to an index of 255 points. So basically this means that the affordability continues to decrease as the average home price increases. Meanwhile, you know, the, the average household income isn't skyrocketing at the same rate. Now, that being said, higher prices are not necessarily a bad thing as it propels job growth, as house-related components, goods and services are sold, and, uh, and it, it not only provides those jobs, but people as they expand and there's housing starts, they need more goods and services. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, 
but it can become a bad thing when the affordability crisis has set in and it makes it difficult for many Americans to be able to uh, afford housing. Now, when supply has been lower than demand, like the current environment that we're in, there is more competition for those same properties. Uh, those properties that are on market, in turn, end up in a multiple bid situation. Uh, they have competition maybe from institutional cash buyers, as well as other tactics being used by competitors in order to waive inspections, waive appraisals, and, uh, and other aspects in order to get them uh, to the top of the list for that house. Now, aspect number two comes down to migration patterns. Now, according to v12data.com, as Americans continue to embrace remote work and virtual schooling, desiring a more spacious home in less populated areas is the focus of 2021 movers. Movers are searching for homes equipped with more outdoor space, larger kitchens, storage, and a room for a home office. With the desire to lower their cost of living and seek homes in less populated areas. So Arizona, Colorado, Idaho, North Carolina, and Texas are seeing an increase in migration with the trend likely to continue throughout 2021. So on the other hand though, New Jersey, Illinois, New York, Connecticut, and Kansas are the top five states people are leaving in 2021. I'm actually surprised that California doesn't hit that list as well. Now, we all know that people are migrating. There's no surprise there. It's been all over the news and media uh, sources, but knowing whether your specific area is affected by an inflow of people coming in or an outflow of people leaving is important in order to understand your market. Now, V12 data went on to outline the reasons why people are moving and, and they stated that remote work is motivating mass US migration. Now, this equates to 14 to 23 million Americans who are planning to move in 2021 because of remote work. Now, more Americans are moving in 2021 than 2020 and over 20% more Americans plan to move in 2021 than 2020. So primarily to lower their cost of living and to be closer to family. The desire for more space in smaller communities is what movers are looking for. More spacious homes in less populated states. Now, home ownership is on the rise with more people moving in 2021 Home ownership is up 11% in this, in this year alone. Now, if this information is helpful to you, please do like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're reminded to come back on a daily basis and improve in managing your personal finances. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.